Hello everybody, welcome back to Being the Odds. It is Friday, April 12th, 2024. We are back with our NBA best bets of the day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zach and welcome to Being the Odds. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, hit notification bell so you never miss a pick. We post these NBA videos every single day along with the NHL and the MLB. We're going after our first 15,000 subscribers, so I'm really excited to have y'all here. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. So to recap yesterday's results, we had a good day. Went two and one yesterday. Unexpected two and one, by the way. I'll talk about that here in a minute. So we had Knicks minus two and a half. Had that one pegged. Even though when the line, even when the line flipped from minus two and a half to plus two and a half for the Knicks, I wasn't too worried because they were just accounting for injuries for the um, for, for the Celtics. And they were, and, all, and almost every Celtics guy played. But the Knicks, you know what? They played hard night in, night out. They have something to play for. They have the three C to play for. So they played great. And the Celtics had nothing to play for. So it was an easy win there. Kings money line. I mean, when you get a 17-0 run on you, you're fucked. <laughs> like, that's really what it comes down to. And the, the Kings, since that point, played very, very well. But it's too much to overcome. And the Pelicans got a good win. Pelicans should be on my do not bet list either way. Being the sense of like, if I bet on them, I lose. Or if I bet against them, I lose. It's really frustrating with the Pelicans. But it is what it is. But then last night, members, you had this sent to you. And everyone else, I posted on my Twitter. Um, I gave out a plus 857 parlay last night. Because I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm feeling hot, feeling good. I'm going to roll with it. Because we, we had a big win in baseball. We had De'Aaron Fox over 26 and a half points. Dub, check mark. Demonis Sabonis over 15 points, check mark, barely. Uh, Keegan Murray 15 points, check mark, barely. Uh, CJ McCollum, 20 plus points, easy, never a doubt, had 19 in the first half. And then Zion got hurt, I thought it was over, and then he dropped 17 points in the third quarter, 25 plus points for Zion, check. So we had a plus 857 parlay, threw 100 on it for fun, and hit an $857 win last night. Love to see that. Um, and... Love to see that on a for fun play. Like, that's awesome. Love the, it, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, so two and one yesterday, but units wise, we went up by like nine units. We, not nine units because it was for fun, but um, we went up a good amount yesterday, which is good to see. Now, overall for the year, 283 and 226 overall. Um, having a great NBA season, hitting parlays left and right. Not just this one. We hit a lot of parlays in February when we were doing them. Um, and we have, full, we have five plays today in the NBA. Four of which I'm going to give you guys here on YouTube. We also have members only best bet in the NBA as well, um, along with two members only best bets the MLB after another winning MLB day yesterday. You can go to ddmbets.com slash picks. As a member, you get all our members only plays every single day, which are our most profitable best bets on a day to day basis. On top of that, you do have a direct line to me. So any game you're considering betting, reach out to our hotline number, get a guaranteed response back of any game you're considering betting, and you get all of our free picks to you on YouTube sent to you before these videos come out. That would take advantage of early lines, early odds. Get those at zdmbest.com slash picks, zdmbest.com slash picks, zdmbest.com slash picks. So let's get into the plays that we have today. I'm going to start with our first play, which is going to be the Heat minus 13 versus the Raptors. Um, this is a trap line, and it's begging you to take the Raptors. I will not bet the Raptors, to be very clear. They are fucking terrible. Everyone on their team, it feels like everyone on their team is injured. Like if you go down the injury stats of the Raptors, the Toronto Raptors, they've got. I mean, it's just a fucking laundry list of players that are important. Um, well, Jonte Porter, the, first off, gambling go. Love to see that. But he's not playing, <laughs> um, obvious for obvious reasons. Poto's not playing. Scotty Barnes um, is not playing. Boucher is not playing. Um, and then Bruce Brown probably won't play. I doubt Gary Trent's playing. And I don't even know who DJ Carton is, so I don't really give a shit. And you might be like, well, Zach, they have R.J. Barrett, and they have Emmanuel Quigley. Um, yeah, that's about it. And if that's all they got, that's brutal, especially as the Raptors have literally nothing to play for, and they're incentivized to lose. While Miami is almost completely healthy, I'm assuming Rozier is probably going to play. Um, like, I, I think he's probably going to play today. If, if he does, I mean, if he does, then it's fine, because you still have Jimmy, you still have Bam, you still have Tyler Hero, you still got the big three in there. And this is the, this is the games where they ramp it up. Plus, Miami is at home. And since they're at home, they play, they play so much better at home than they do on the road. They're going against a team that literally has nothing to play for. The sharp money's all over Miami tonight. And, again, the Heat are at home. So I'm rolling with the Heat here, minus 13, versus the Raptors. Next, we go with the Pacers, plus three, versus the Cavs. Uh, when I look at the Pacers, the Pacers are missing no one. Uh, no one really of note. I mean, they are going to miss... Um, Matherin, but I mean, he's been out for a good minute. So it's not like it's really like changing. I mean, he's out for the whole year. Um, but you look at, if you look at Cleveland, they're missing some, they're, they're missing some like key role players, Dean Wade, Ty Jerome, 
Sam Merrill, like they're going to be missing these guys. And that is a big, big deal. And when it comes, and it's not because these guys are good, but you need depth against this Pacers team because Pacers have depth, they have a ton of depth. And the thing that, that the Cavs usually have as an advantage over teams is their size because they have Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, who are shot blockers, great defenders, can score on the offensive end. The Pacers have Siakam, who can match up very, very well with an Evan Mobley. And they have Miles Turner, which is a great matchup against uh, Jared Allen because if they're going to do the high pick and roll and Jared Allen decides to drop into the lane, do drop coverage, Halliburton's going to have 17, 18-foot jumpers or really what he'll probably do is just line up from three and nail it. Or if he decides to come out, Halliburton has the speed to get around him, either lay up, drive, and kick, which is what their, which is their best offense, and let's say they do the other side with Siakam. They're just going to take Miles Turner, plop him on the three-point line because he's a good three-point shooter, and Jared Allen's going to have to follow him. And if he has to follow him, they're going to have rim runs like you wouldn't believe today. So I like the Pacers here, plus three versus the Cavs, and they're getting points. I think they're just going to, I think they're going to win. And by the way, if the Pacers win, I think they jump the Cavs based on some tiebreakers because if you're looking at the standings of the Eastern Conference, uh, the Cavs are only one game up on the Pacers, and I think the Pacers have the tiebreakers. So if that's the case, they're going to jump from six to four, which is a big deal. You'd much rather go against the Magic uh, than go against the Knicks. So I'm rolling the Pacers here plus three versus the Cavs. We'll be very interested in seeing this game, how it goes. And then we'll go with Oklahoma City, minus 14 and a half versus the Bucks. Uh, the Bucs are going to be without Giannis and more than likely Dame as well. Uh, Oklahoma City is healthy, completely healthy. Um, Blue Dort's probably going to play, so that means they have no one in the injury report. And they're fighting for the one seed. In the standings right now, they are one game out of um, they're one game out of first. And they're only one game behind the Nuggets. And they've got two to play. So if the, if the Thunder went out, they have a shot at the one seed. If they don't, they're going to be a three seed, which then they have to go against the Pelicans, which actually isn't a bad, a bad, a bad matchup for them in all reality. But Oklahoma City is going to go after that one seed because it's a big deal for their city. It's a big deal for their team to see that they are the one seed. A big, and that's going to give them some serious momentum going into next season. Because I don't think they're going to get past second or third round, but they're, they're going to be – that's a big deal for them. And also, they're at home. And this is a game where I just feel like the Bucs are going to pack it in. This just feels like a game where it's plus 14 out for the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, people are going to be like, oh, my God, hammer. Like, like they're going to slam their credit card on the table, Drewski style, for, for, that, for that play. But Oklahoma City is going to win this game by a million tonight. They have no one to guard SGA, no one to guard Jalen Williams, no one really to guard Chet, especially if Giannis doesn't play. And this Bucks team doesn't play defense at all. Plus Doc Rivers is the coach, which means there's going to be some fuck shit happening for the um, for the Bucks at some point or another. I'm rolling with Oklahoma City here, minus 14 at versus the Bucks. Scary line, but I'm rolling with it. And then we're going with the Kings, plus five versus the Suns. Um, I, I think the Kings just bounce back. After getting really, getting, they're getting five points. I think they can win this game on the, at home. And if you look again at the standings here, really so much, which really frustrates me about the NBA sometimes, is that so much of the NBA it, during the regular season, especially this time of year, March, early April, is just figuring out who's going to try. And if you look at the Kings here, they're in a dead heat with the Warriors. They're in a dead heat with the Warriors, and they're in a dead heat with the, with, with the Lakers. Like, they're exactly the same record. Now, luckily... The Kings have the tiebreaker over the Lakers. I'm not sure about the Warriors, but they do have that. But if they beat the Suns twice, if they beat the Suns and went out the rest of their games, they could get to the seventh seed, um, which for them is obviously a big deal. The Suns, I think, the, the, the Suns, I don't know. I think they have so much talent where they feel as though it doesn't matter where they're seated, they're going to go out and win. Um, and today could be a place where they do win. But I think it's going to be extremely close. Both teams, are, it's going to be a playoff type atmosphere. I'm going to roll the Kings some getting five points. I think it's a really close game either way. I think the Kings could win it outright, or it's the one or two point game. If that's the case, five will be plenty to cover. So, guys, so, so like I said, we do have three four, uh, three members only plays. Excuse me. Um, you can get this at zdmbest.com slash picks. Website is linked in the comments below. But, guys, go lock in those picks. Let's go win together now. Let's go make some money. I'll see you all tomorrow. Make sure you watch out those other videos.